In the United States, a number of things frame general concepts of diversity. The biggest framers are law, history, which includes current events, and personal background. The law does not define all of diversity, but it says certain defined differences are legally protected from discrimination under the law. Unlawful discrimination means you violate the law if a protected personal characteristic influences your management decision about one, to hire, fire, promote, reward, demote, punish, or something like that. So when I talk about diversity under the law, I'm normally talking about characteristics prohibited by law from being a part of your management decision even though there's many other aspects of diversity. The law, of course, can be different in different jurisdictions of the U.S. and definitely between the U.S. and other countries. And we're going to be focusing on U.S. law and a bit more on California. Under the 1964 Civil Rights Act, race, religion, sex, and nationality are protected characteristics. As the laws developed, age has also been protected in part, pregnancy usually protected, but discrimination on the basis of dress or body type is not, is not protected. Discrimination on the basis of language often is not protected. Sexual orientation sometimes is protected, and there are tons of other differences that we have that are not protected. To discriminate on all those differences might be stupid. It might be bad management. It might be against organizational policy. It might be unethical, but it's not illegal under the law. That means you can't be sued in court. And then we have some issues of diversity that are applicable to government organizations, but not to private organizations. And we have issues of legality that are applicable to larger private companies, but not smaller, usually less than 50, 50 employees. One of the legal diversity issues that we often hear about concerns the law of affirmative action. And that concept of affirmative action has changed meaning depending on who you're talking to, what law you're talking about, and whether something happened before or after a long list of Supreme Court decisions that changed the law. Those who are opposed to this concept of affirmative action claim it's about quotas and reverse discrimination, both of which have been prohibited by the law. You can't do it. Affirmative action these days is more about striving to build diverse pools of job applicants. While many diversity issues are about employer discrimination, many others are about who can get along with who and what impact that has. Most everybody says they're not prejudiced and most of us still tend to be comfortable with people who are like us and less comfortable with those who aren't like us, who think differently, act differently, eat differently, dress differently, or, or talk differently. Why are people prejudiced towards others? It's partly about history, partly about culture. Often it's about fear or anxiety about those who are different than us. It's often about how you were raised. It's about whether your parents had negative attitudes about some groups. And like I said before, it's about how other people react to you. Once they categorize you as one of those kind of people, it's hard to reject that brand yourself. And once one person of that group treats you badly, it's hard not to assume that others of that group will also treat you badly. In the United States, our history had a large impact on people's attitudes towards others, and we can't escape the fact that 
we were founded in part on enslaving African Americans and in part by conquest and taking over land occupied by other peoples. We can't escape from the fact that women were not seen as equal to men. We can't escape that religion has often supported discrimination against other religions or against those who have characteristics that their religion is against. And we're going to address some of those historical con uh, issues in depth next week. So if we talk about diversity, we do so within the context of law, of history, and of culture. In this class, we're also talking about if within the concept of management of people to accomplish organizational tasks. There are several themes in this narrative. And by the way, when I say narrative, I mean the way we talk about something or someone. One of our main narratives is that our goal is efficiency of operations. It is economic. We want to manage diversity to have a more efficient and effective organization. We want to eliminate conflict based on differences and focuses on, on the ways diversity can help us achieve organizational goals. This is a management narrative pattern. And this management narrative purports to be practical and pragmatic. It's less concerned with justice and more concerned with organizational goals and effectiveness. Now, I've only touched on a few of the incredible number of ways we think and talk about diversity, all of which impact how we act.